The Cuyahoga County Operations and Intergovernmental Relations Committee meeting for Tuesday, October 18, 2016 is called to order and I would ask the clerk to please call the roll. Calling the roll, Mr. Miller. Here. Ms. Simon. Here. Mr. Brady. Mr. Brady is absent. Mr. Germana. Here. Mr. Greenspan. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Has anybody signed in for public comment related to the agenda? No, Mr. Chair, no one has signed in. We have uh, minutes in your packet for the September 20th meeting of this committee. Do we have a motion relative to those minutes? Move to approve. I can second it. Okay. Uh, I can't vote. Uh, Dave, were you at the meeting? Are you able to vote yes? Okay, that's good. Okay, any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And one abstention, okay, that's three votes in the affirmative, so that's sufficient for passage and the minutes are approved. And we have no matters referred to the committee and our main item of the day is that we're gonna hear a presentation on the performance and innovation process improvement efforts on behalf of uh, Daryl Mott, our Chief Innovation Officer, and uh, I first want to say that, of course, we have all learned of your uh, departure, and, uh, and I've, I've just learned that you will effectively be leaving probably at the end of this week, so, it's, uh, so this meeting is very timely. What we're going to do is learn of what the efforts are that uh, we've put in motion on process and innovation, and hopefully this will help us to uh, have a, uh, a, a transition where these efforts can be continued under new leadership. Please come forward. <clears throat> Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, so I will start my presentation. I've got a couple of audio visuals as well as a um, PowerPoint presentation and um, very excited to uh, share information with you this afternoon. All right, so today's agenda, I'm going to go over a couple of things. The first thing that I'll talk about is the strategy, right? The innovation and performance strategy as it exists today. That includes discussing the budget and organizational chart. Then I'll talk about you know, what um, we've done to implement innovation and performance in the county thus far. We've had a lot of successes and a lot of opportunities uh, for organizational learning. And then I'll talk about what will happen next, right? So I will be transitioning. However, I am a very passionate practitioner of government innovation and performance uh, across the nation. So I will still have a partnership with the county even after I depart, but um, we'll talk about what we can do next. And then I'll take questions and answers. And I'm aware that there is a uh, baseball game that starts fairly soon. So um, I'll be cognizant of the time. All right, so let's talk about strategy, budget, and the organizational chart. So the vision for the um, Office of Innovation and Performance is for that the county to be a national leader in uh, data-driven innovative governance, right? So that, that means a lot because the county is one of many uh, progressive counties that has decided to invest in creating a culture of innovation throughout county government so that we can better partner and drive results, which means that you know, we here have the opportunity to learn from others which are more mature given their experience in this space. But there is no doubt in my mind, given the assets and what makes this county unique, that, Cuyah that Cuyahoga County can be the leader. The mission of the office to date is to strengthen the county's ability to innovate and improve service um, in an effort to positively impact the lives of county residents. So, I mean, we are in the service delivery business, right? So we need to, I think, optimize and improve and innovate um, our ability to positively, you know, make a difference on the on behalf of folks who you know, benefit from our services. And the Innovation Office, I think, is a key asset to help uh, make that happen. We talk about values, and you know, values kind of flow throughout the experiences and the activities of the staff, which I'll introduce, and talk about 
which work for the Office of Innovation and Performance, nothing which the office does um, is alone. So every project, every process improvement initiative, every training opportunity requires that we partner. And, and behind that partnering, um, there are a couple of things I want to emphasize. First is um, the fact that we're data-driven and empirical. So this is um, about management by fact, not by opinion. And uh, we need to leverage the use of data as much as possible to make informed uh, decisions. Two is to be transparent. So um, we need a knowledge base and share uh, projects, lessons learned, data, reports, et cetera. But um, our collaboration with every partner is, is, is a transparent. Um, so we have to collaborate and partner. Otherwise, we can't get anything done because we don't own the programs or the processes um, which the departments own ultimately. Very passionate about results. Um, we're professional. And um, one other thing is that we try to live a healthy kind of work-life balance and we make time for lunch because the days can be extremely long in this kind of space. We're also entrepreneurial and even intrapreneurial, right? So it's about you know, selling the vision, selling the services to, you know, folks who haven't even discovered that you know, this is a service which I can benefit from because it's, you know, doing this kind of work in a large, complex county is, is relatively new. So we've got to be good spokespersons, champions, and kind of market the opportunities. All right. So some of the, here are the services which the office is um, providing right now. So these are consistent with the uh, body of knowledge for internal management consulting, we talk about change management. There are deliberate change management structures, and change is hard. <laughs> um, there's strategic planning. In fact, as I talk about you know, taking Kaya, a county stat to the next level, one of the first ways to do that is to have a strategic plan at the right level. So we are spend, we spend a lot of time with departments doing strategic planning. Um, a lot of folks use these terms interchangeably, but performance measurement, performance management, and performance leadership are distinct, but that's a service that we um, offer as well. Project program and portfolio management um, against the, pro the uh, Project Management Institute body of knowledge. We talk about analytics and business intelligence, so we are geeks and love to dissect and slice and dice the data. Um, we've designed surveys and culture assessments, which is a big part of assessing exactly where the organization is. Um, skill development and capability building, you know, for the right people. A lot of this has to do with, you know, if we want to make change in a positive way, we must provide the skills to everyone um, so that they can change. The last one is, you know, process improvement, and that, that's really something that um, we're all deeply passionate about because it's, you know, how do we improve the work systems, the work streams, the, the critical business processes that deliver the services to citizens, and we're very passionate about um, providing resources in that arena. So um, a couple of priorities from the county executive um, uh, for the innovation office. So when it was formed, the idea was to let's, let's really figure out how to resurrect county stat, take that to the next level. Let's build these innovation skills to really create this, you know, culture of innovation. Let's save money if we can and improve a couple of targeted processes that um, I think many internal clients and users of these processes definitely wanted to um, see um, in a better place. So let me talk about the budget. So um, I'm showing you a couple of different um, perspectives on the budget. The first perspective is the 2016 current projection in addition to grants. So you kind of see that, um, you know, for we have funding for you know, personal services and benefits, and there's, um, there's some funding for contracts and professional services, as well as a small pot for other operating um, for, you know, travel and reimbursements for conferences, et cetera. Then we were awarded two grants from the Cleveland Foundation. The first grant was for about $200,000, uh, which was intended to help create this culture of innovation and performance. I'll talk about how we're spending those funds later. And the second grant, we actually have, I believe he's in the audience, Ricardo Mason. He's raised his hand. He is the county's first public service fellow, which was um, um, funded by the Cleveland Foundation. And it was a national search. And we've got a, a, a really talented individual who's working right now in the, in, the, in the innovation office. For 2017, we've got, you know, um, a perspective on this, which 
Um, I got this from finance uh, last week. So there's, again, some, we see a little bit uh, more for the personal services. Um, we have some funding for contracts, as well as um, we have $330,000 from the State Innovation Fund. So, so what exactly is that? Um, and again, it's not very easy to organize, you know, the implementation of grants into a single fiscal year. But um, the reason I put the uh, $330,000 into the 2017 um, budget is because we've won two Lean Ohio grants in addition to the one that was previously won. And we've applied for two additional grants. And I think we'll win those two additional grants. And if we do, the total will be 330000 because of the administrative process for accepting the uh, grant agreements, I don't believe that we'll have the signatures that we need until the end of the year, even though we've already won a couple grants. And we should, I believe, before the end of November, get notice of award for the additional two grants. And I'll describe those later on in the presentation. But I think the good news is that the office has um, been pretty good at going out and get, getting more resources from the state of Ohio to further innovation efforts. So here is the way that the organizational uh, charts uh, looks today. And again, this will change with new leadership, et cetera. But um, you see myself, I've got uh, three direct reports. There are two vacancies, two performance consultants. We've been working with HR um, and the PRC all year to get the right classification. And interviews are happening right now for those performance consultants. Performance consultants um, reflect, I think, the latest kind of cutting edge in terms of the competencies that we need to kind of drive innovation. So those competencies have to do with project management, how do we execute projects, process improvement, let's improve process, and let's be very good at um, data analytics. Um, we've had two great fellows and um, that worked with us this summer. They helped out with the taxpayers project. And uh, we have one great fellow now from the Cleveland Foundation couple of basic definitions for innovation that are consistent with best practice. So the first one is that, you know, we really need to creatively solve public problems, you know, whether it's recidivism or whether it's, um, you know, how do we reunite families or, you know, whether it's something to do with um, better contract management, right? So it's really how do we creatively solve these nagging, pressing public problems? The definition that I prefer to use on the right is a little more complicated. It comes from the Malcolm Baldridge performance excellence framework. I mean, it's all about, you know, new meaningful change to improve products, processes, or become a more uh, effective organization. That, that's a, a very a deep interest of mine, and uh, we've been able to share some of those um, and deploy some of those uh, practices um, in Cuyahoga County. Now, what is also interesting, when we talk about innovation, we cannot divorce it from continuous improvement. Well, what is continuous improvement? Well, it's, it's the ongoing efforts to really improve operations, service delivery, et cetera. So that comes from the American Society for Quality. What I want to point out is that doing structured, um, team-based, customer-focused problem solving involving the employees who work the process is still very new in government, right? It's still very new in many organizations that have rather um, informal improvement practices. So this, even the notion of continuous improvement is something that becomes innovative in government. All right, so what, what have we done? Okay, let's talk about that. Let me play a one minute video about the taxpayers project. Let's see. Last year, I waited in line for two hours. Today, I waited in line 30 seconds. And it was a pleasure to pay my taxes by check that quickly. The service was fantastic. We collect about $2 billion in property taxes each year. Many people wait until the very end of the tax collection season to actually pay taxes. So what, but what we've done is actually provided for a better customer experience for anyone who wants to come down to the county headquarters and pay by cash, check, or credit card in person. I came in today, immediately greeted at the door, given several options on how to pay, talked to two or three more people on the way over. It was great. 
And I just wanted to say I will really appreciate the culture of the treasurer's department. They've always been nothing but kind and helpful. Our improvements look like the following, right? So we've got better flow through the process. We have better signage. We have better communication. We have a better division of work. Everyone came together to figure out what's the best layout. We, I think, have worked as a team in quick order to provide for much, much better customer experience. And we're getting feedback. We're collecting data. We're not done yet. This is about continuous improvement. So we'll learn from this experience and apply lessons learned to the next. All right. Let me exit out of this. Okay. So this was, I think, one of the uh, more successful projects that we uh, managed to deploy this year. And I want to thank Sharon Sobel Jordan for sponsoring uh, at the executive level this project. And uh, Heather Reffitt, who is our director of consulting, was both the project manager and floor captain for this. And all the employees across, I mean, Chris Murray's awesome in Treasury, and we had um, volunteers from Youth Opportunities Unlimited just to kind of, you know, greet every single customer who walked into the building, right? So there was, so no one um, walked into the experience and spoke and, and was alone. So everyone was greeted. Uh, we had uh, interns who were collecting data and doing the analysis on the data, and just many departments, including HR, came together just to kind of create a cross-functional experience, which would uh, make everyone's life easier when they came in to pay property taxes um, in July. So th there were many more projects like this, and um, this is very exciting and is a good example of using kind of a combination of lean and project management just to make things simple and clear. All right, so we have been working very diligently on um, administering the, an existing Lean Ohio grant to improve targeted procurement processes. And what I want to show you here is that it's very much about engaging the employees in a structured problem-solving process. So you have you know, two photos that, of course, took place in this very room of um, staff who are really engaged in defining the problem, uh, measuring the problem and analyzing the problem for its root causes. And then in this Kaizen event, the teams came up with a draft um, improvement plan. So what action steps do we need to do to address the root causes which matter the most? So th this is a very inclusive event. In fact, if I'm correct, over more than 33 um, county employees, including which don't include 12 champions, so more than 45 um, people total were engaged in this experience and still, in fact, are. So this is, I think, one awesome event that we managed to run. Here's another event. Um, as a practitioner, I, I must uh, keep my skills sharp. So, you know, this is an event in, in this very room where we worked with, again, 30 people in an all-day event where we can really diagnose well, what is the process for hiring for unclassified positions, Let's involve all staff who actually work that process. Let's map that process. Let's define this, the time frame for that process and really understand what are some root causes that we can address right now. And so Douglas Dykes has a very talented talent acquisition staff, and they are working right now on the implementation plan. But the very you know, point of this is that it's very much collaborative and involves all stakeholders who are involved. So even a few directors, and I believe Councilman Miller, you attended the report out for this um, Kaizen event. Another, I think, um, very exciting opportunity that um, the office was involved with, and you see a couple of photos here, is really documenting the strategic plan for the county executive. So there's a lot of activity, a lot of work already underway. And what I've done is I've um, introduced the balanced scorecard methodology for strategic planning. We've gone through a two and a half month process to really, really document what we know exists today. And uh, there's a plan to release that to the public um, sometime in the beginning of November. So this is a very collaborative process. Um, and you see some staff here and chiefs engaged with other staff just to kind of really have the right kind of discussions about the strategy. Um, Here's another, it's not the best view right now, but here's another um, screenshot of something that Steve Wright, he's our Director of Business Intelligence. Um, he's sitting in the audience. Um, he was a part of a White House police state initiative. So um, there's been a 21st century task force on 
um, our task force on 21st century policing tactics. And the goal is to really make it a fact-driven kind of data conversation. We were a county which was invited to participate, and we used a simple kind of business intelligence tool, partnering with Socrata for no cost. And um, here we're looking at data for um, deaths for um, some, you know, like heroin and, and fentanyl in the county. So this is just an example of a of an initiative that we've been able to join and work on and uh, partnering with some of our departments like the sheriff and medical examiner's office. So we've talked a little bit about procurement and um, it's a very complex and interesting um, experience. So let's talk about what's on the left, which is the scope of what we're using for the existing Lean Ohio grant. Um, so when I came in, you know, there was this Lean Ohio grant that targeted procurement and what we did with the um, county staff involved was kind of decompose the scope of the work into something very simple and manageable. So you see the targeted procurement processes that we've been working on on the, uh, on the very left. All these things are processes and documents that folks use today that really just take a long time. In fact, the, the percentage of the time that uh, we miss the expected timeline is, you know, sometimes between 60, 70, or 80 percent, right? So there's a lots of room for improvement with the uh, processes here. To the right, you kind of see the, the spirit of collaboration and the additional work that we can use and, and um, help build employee skills. So we've got four grants. The first two grants for jobs and family services and development have already been won. So you know, we, we have additional funding and support for training to improve the processes that connect clients to meaningful careers, as well as the loan repayment rate. The two pending notices, and we're very confident that we, I think, will stand a chance of um, winning this award. Um, we've got some collaboration in child support to reduce the time required to terminate child support payments. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of room for improvement there. And in, within corrections, I mean, we have um, an opportunity to, to, to improve the Timelines for investigating assaults. So that's both inmate on inmate assaults and inmate on staff assaults, right? So the, the quicker we can investigate, the better. Um, so this again, this is a part of that $330,000 that um, we're going to be able to deploy in Cuyahoga County in the future. So there's a lot of work that is underway. So th there's a big portfolio of activities, of changes to operations, of, of projects. There are are a lot of people involved and have been involved throughout this entire year. Um, so we have, um, Steve Wright is working on a payroll evaluation team just to really understand, you know, what is the existing payroll process. He's working with Scott Rourke and, and the, ER, the new ERP director, Cindy, to really figure out, well, what are some recommendations that we can actually um, understand prior to the implementation of ERP? Um, we have, you know, uh, I'm working with Mike Foley on creating a sustainability strategic plan. So, so that process is, is, is already in motion. We have um, you know, finished the first Kaizen event for the hiring um, process improvement initiative. Uh, there may be another to look at the classified position. That's, that's probably next. Um, you've got some of the, you know, like the Cuyahoga stat will be a very, I think, interesting and uh, challenging journey because what, Cuyahoga stat will do is help us check the progress, understand the health against the county executive's strategic plan, which contains at least 19 different objectives and probably, you know, 30 different measures that reflect the choices or the priorities of today. So there's a considerable amount of work already underway that um, the Innovation and Performance Office has been a part of, and it just requires a great process and, and teamwork and a, and a focus on results. So what will happen next? And these are just, just options, right? Um, so there are a couple of things that I think need to happen next, right? So one is, I, I believe you've seen this, there is a, uh, the, the county has already engaged in the search process. Um, I personally, you know, wrote the job description, collaborating with um, HR, um, and I've been reaching out to different national networks, um, very diverse networks to kind of really recruit the, the right talent, um, given what we've evolved this position to next, right? Um, 
there. I've talked to um, Sharon Sobel Jordan about the interest and, of course, drafting an ordinance to formally create the office, and that's an option for county leadership. Um, the county executive, again, will release a very detailed uh, strategic plan um, soon, and county staff will be what implements that strategic plan, right? So it's very consistent, I think, coherent uh, management system. We have existing implementation plans for both the Kaizen events for the procurement process as well as the um, hiring process. And uh, we need to, you know, implement those plans so that we can check to see if we've made a difference. Um, we also have, I think, the ability to, of course, you know, implement our, our the grants which we're winning. It, it does require resources and, and attention and great tactics to implement and administer the existing lean Six Sigma process improvement work that we've already engaged in and, and committed to. Um, and what's also really important is that we continue to have an intentional communication strategy and involve the employees and communicate with them, especially those who have been engaged. So if you've been a part of the, the procurement um, process improvement efforts, it's important to communicate with staff on a, on a monthly or a regular basis. Same thing with, the, with any future improvement endeavors. Also to your right, you see an option for um, what I've called a performance system, right? So it's, it's just an option and a, and a framework that I'm very passionate about because it kind of helps us clarify what we're doing, you know, maybe why we do it, how well we're doing it, and what can we do to improve. So one of the first, I think, elements is to have an organizational assessment of like what's working well and what's not working well is do some scanning of the environment internally and externally, right? So we know that we're going to see a significant bump in our elderly population, right? Like to what extent are we prepared for that, right? We know that we have, um, we're dealing with opioid increases and need to kind of drive more resources to prevention, treatment, and the right strategies to address um, the, the increase in use of opioids. But as we assess then we should have at least some corporate or executive strategic plan that talks about mission, vision, values, brand, objectives, um, where we're taking this county, um, measures, targets, and initiatives or projects or other changes that actually make things, make the plan a reality. Then deliberately communicate that plan. So we're in two and three right now, and um, you'll see more activity in, in November. Um, then it's, well, how do we align the budget with the strategy, right? The strategy is not the budget. The budget is not the strategy. They should be aligned. The strategy ought to come first. But then you've got a different type of plan, and I think you could have a department plan, right? So an operating plan that talks about the men and women, the processes and the assets used to implement the um, work of the department, align people with those plans, and then use Cuyahoga stat and process improvement to understand how well we're doing and what we need to do to improve, and then do it all over again. You have this great cycle of learning. It's just a sample performance system. A couple of options for what can happen next. Um, I provided resources to the county on this growing national and even international network on um, government innovation and performance. Everything's hyperlinked. Um, I'll work very closely with the Harvard Kennedy School on you know, how do you create the structure within localities for innovation and performance. Um, you know, we are part of the White House Police Data Initiative. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, of, I think, resources for any government which is looking to improve. So here's you know, one kind of compendium of resources. And then it's time for questions. And I know we've got to play baseball, so. <laughs> Okay, well, that was a great presentation, a good overview. So thank you very much for that. And uh, who has questions? Uh, Councilman Greenspan. Great, yeah. And then I, and I, I've got to run, not because of the game, but for something else unrelated to the game, but the first pitch would be nice to watch. <laughs> um, so you mentioned earlier that you, you, have, you intend you're leaving, but you're going to have an existing relationship or continuing relationship with the county. What does that mean, and what does that look like? Sure, fantastic question. So a couple of things. One, um, this county is really prepared to invest in employees and, and endeavor upon skill building and um, employee capability building projects, right? 
There are very few practitioners who've worked in governments to design a project management program that's consistent with the project management body of knowledge. So I will personally help with the design and implementation of that, right? Um, I've, I mentioned that performance system. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to implement it. So I'm happy because I, I implement these systems. I'm very happy to share any lessons learned, tactics, strategy on uh, what it looks like to implement those systems. There are lots of resources and um, convenings of leaders who are involved in the in data governance, um, funding for outcomes, uh, open data, big that, that's, data. That's fine. I don't need to go yeah. there. What's okay. your involvement? Are you going to be a consultant to the county? Um, I will only be a free thought leader and resource. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and yeah, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but first pitch. The um, <laughs> so you, you see your last day. So your last day employed by the county will be this Friday. Um, I'm going to take vacation, but my last day in the office will be around th this Friday. How much vacation? How long have you been here? I've been here for, um, I started in, in, in January. Okay, so how much vacation have you accrued? Um, or how much is left? How much is left? About uh, three weeks or so. Okay. Okay. All right, I have no questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh other questions? Uh, I have a few. Uh, I'd like to add an item to your uh, your innovation portfolio. Okay. Which is that the uh, the that the council passed legislation uh, last month for the creation of a health and human services plan for for Cuyahoga County, uh, comprehensive planning process, and so. Uh, I'm sure that uh, that your office is going to want to get involved in that and work with HHS on that development. So that's uh, that's one item. Uh, the second thing I'd like to ask about is multitasking. Uh, I've I've uh, I've seen. Uh, Lots of governments, they have, a, they have something they want to get done, they put together a good plan for it, and, and they do it, and they have two or three. And, but then when they, when they get up to 10 or 20, well, then the, uh, the timelines no longer can be met because there's too many different things going on at once, and they conflict with each other, and you can't focus on everything all at once. And... and uh, uh, and, and uh, I'm just wondering whether your, uh, your approach to innovation has any techniques for dealing with that problem. Great question. So um, I think the approach does. So there are a couple of, I think, concepts that should be considered, right? The first is a way to prioritize the things that you multitask because there are some things that I think um, will, are more likely to make the impact that you want. And it's always important to know at any point in time, what is the priority of the day and resource that to the greatest extent possible, right? The second item is that there is, um, I think, an opportunity for more formal governance, right? So who decides who gets to do what? And how do you actually um, monitor and diagnose how well the what is getting done? And so if we have 20 items to do, we should be able to always force rank and have a formal committee, a formal structure to actually say, OK, this is something that we should work on. Or if something else changes, we should be able to pivot the priorities as appropriate. But that should not happen by accident. It should be deliberate and intentional. So just you know, let's prioritize, and there's a process for that, and then let's have governance in place to make sure that the right people are deciding what those priorities are. Okay. Uh, what's the timeline on your replacement? Um, there, so here's what I know right now, um, and the executive's office is working with uh, Douglas Dykes and HR to um, find someone to replace me as quickly as possible. 
Um, and it would be an awesome target to have that person on board before the end of the year. That would be an awesome target. <laughs> uh, final question is, uh, and I know the two are closely related, but uh, what's What's the relevant, relative importance you attach to, uh, to process and service improvement as opposed to saving dollars? Fantastic question. So a couple of things. Um, it's always important to understand what are those burning issues of the day. So what's, what's really important? Because we are in the service business, I think that we should have two coherent and aligned processes. The first is the budgetary policy making process, right? That provides tremendous guidance on the allocation of, of hard assets like dollars and positions, right? So that that's very important. But we also have people and programs and projects and we have a work environment which is extremely important and I don't think we've emphasized the process improvement of service delivery. I don't think we've we've measured our outcomes as rigorously as rigorously as we possibly can. So I think we need to double down on the latter, right? Make the process what we need it to be, and that will have a you know financial impact. But the point is, it, it's about excellence in service delivery and in the way that we work, which that's just the definition of a process is. Know, how we get the work done. So let's make those things awesome. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. Well, thanks for your time here at the county, and we appreciate this um, framework that you provided to us. But just a um, in the weeds question on this grant, Lean Ohio program potential grant, and the one of the objectives is to reduce the time the, to terminate child support payments. Right. What's going on there that when people, minority or minor children age out into majority, they're not terminating the payments fast enough? So that's a great question. So there's opportunity for improvement there. I think the, um, and you know, Deborah Watkins is the, is the, our partner on this. There's a state required time frame, um, but, and I can't recall what that time frame is, but in actuality, sometimes, not all the time, it may take, you know, up north of four months to actually make that administrative change. And so the faster we can reduce that, the better off everybody will be. To terminate, not to establish, it right. appears. So so have you engaged in the process of going to every department and getting a laundry list of huh. potential, um, you know, um, well, problems that, that need fixing? Is that how you kind of approach this initially? Um, we didn't do it in that structured way, which is a great way to go about it because we're still working with the early adopters. So, you know, Ken Mills, uh, Deborah Watkins, uh, David Merriman, um, and, uh, you know, Ted Carter are really, really, really hungry for these initial grants, but we're using these grants to pilot what will become lean Cuyahoga or not will, but can become lean Cuyahoga. So what that means is that. Um, there eventually can be a structured process of discovering what the laundry list is and then of ranking and prioritizing uh, potential projects. How are they the lucky ones to be able to be part of this grant? Great question. Um, so we used the, um, we spoke to employees who were involved in the uh, procurement process improvement projects, and many of those employees began to nominate potential future projects. And then we also presented these projects or the Lean Ohio experience to directors. And I emailed all directors and said, hey, here's an opportunity. There's a deadline. Uh, you can imagine what happens when we're very busy, but there's a grant opportunity. And the people who came forward with the, with the ideas happened to be the ones that were selected. Yeah, so there was notification to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> There is uh, there is a need in this effort to combine logic and intuition, and and uh, I get the sense that you're doing that, and and uh, uh, we hate to see you go. We thank thank you for uh, 
the uh, progress that you've made so far, and, and I think it was uh, a great presentation that was uh, both comprehensive and, and also succinct. So uh, we uh, wish you well, and uh, if there's no other questions, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any, uh, any miscellaneous business? There's nothing on uh, this committee's agenda that's uh, immediately apparent. Uh, anyone signed in for public comment? No, Mr. Chair. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. We are adjourned and go tribe.